Hey, I'm Hunter from Skillthrive, and in this video, you're going to learn how to use the YouTube API to display a channel's real-time subscriber count in a React component. So I'm actually using this on skillthrive.com in order to show the live count of subscribers that I have on my website. Now there's a couple reasons I thought this is a really cool idea. And one is to, you know, for people that come back to the website over and over again, they can see that the community is growing. And for people who've never heard of Skillthrive, they can see that this is a thriving and legitimate community. So they're more likely to join. Now maybe the, the use case you have is a little bit different, uh, but feel free to do the same thing. I think it's a really cool way of using the YouTube API in order to pull in this data. Now, in order to uh, use the project, we're going to be using Code Sandbox. And Code Sandbox is an online um, development tool that allows you to create various types of environments and then write and develop the code just like you would on your computer. But for tutorials, it's really helpful because we don't have to uh, go over how to set everything up on your local computer if you already don't have that set up. So you can see here that we have this YouTube counter component with some really basic stuff going on here. And what it's currently doing is displaying the uh, subscriber count of PewDiePie. So now you can kind of get an idea of what we're going to create. Let's go to codesandbox.io, click here to create a new sandbox, and then click here to create a React app. And this is just going to create some basic code here for us to get started with. And the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and get rid of um, those two uh, header tags. So once we delete that, I'm gonna come over to the source folder here, click on this icon to create a, uh, a new folder and call this components. And in here, I'm going to create another directory, call this one YouTube. And in here, I'm gonna create a file called youtubecounter.jsx. And I'm also gonna create a new file called config.js. Now let's go ahead and just hop into our config file. And the first thing I'm gonna do is create a constant called config. And this is going to be equal to an object and we're gonna set a couple values here. And the first one is going to be our API key value. And that's just gonna be an empty string for now. And the next one is the channel ID, which is the ID of the YouTube channel that we want to get data off of. And again, I'm just gonna keep this as a uh, blank string or an empty string for now. Then we need to go ahead and export this so we can use this, uh, these variables in our component. So it's gonna export default config. And now let's go ahead and get our API key. And to do that, we're going to be using, uh, con we have to go to console.developers.google.com. And once you're there and sign into your account and come into the APIs uh, and services and then into your dashboard, you, you, you know, unless you have already have an API set up, you're gonna have an empty dashboard like this. But all you have to do to create an API is click on this button, and then you can search for YouTube, and then the YouTube Data API version three will show up, and then you can click here to enable it. And once it enables the API, you can go in and we can create some credentials. And to do that, we come over to this button, and it's gonna ask us a couple questions. So which API are you using? We're going to use the data API. Where will you be calling it from? We're going to be calling it from the web, uh, web browser. And what data do we need? We need public data. And then we can click here to create uh, the credentials. And now we have an API key. Now remember this API key is uh, right now there's not restricted. So anyone in the world can uh, make calls off of this API key. But let's go ahead and copy this. And then we'll come back and restrict this so only the browser here in uh, Code Sandbox can make calls from it. So let's go ahead and paste that in here. So now we have the API key. We'll come back to the credentials wizard. I'm gonna click on done. And then we're gonna come back into the API key here. And I'm gonna make sure we restrict it. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is come over and under application restrictions, I'm gonna come over to HTTP uh, refers, so websites, so only websites can make requests from this. And then we can say here what the refer URL is. And in our case, it's going to be this app right here. So we'll just go ahead and copy that URL here in the browser, and then we'll paste it in. And now only our code sandbox can make requests to this API. 
So let's go ahead and click done. And now we need to make sure we have restrict key on. Then we select the API we want to restrict and then we click on save. All right, so now that API key is restricted and only our browser here in Code Sandbox can make calls to it. Now the next thing you need is the channel ID. So I'm just gonna come into YouTube and pick one of my favorite channels here, maybe the H3 podcast. And once we go to um, you know, their, their channel, you can see in the URL that we have this, this slug pat over uh, next to the channel uh, URL. And this uh, value here is what we need. So I'm just gonna copy this and then paste it in between the strings. And that's everything we need to uh, get the subscriber count from the H3 podcast. So let's go ahead and save that config file. And the next thing we wanna do is we wanna come into the YouTube uh, counter JSX file. And the first thing we wanna do is just go ahead and import React. And that's going to be from React. And then I'm just going to create a new function-based component. And we're going to be using uh, React hooks here instead of a, a state component or a class component. And here, the first thing we want to do is we want to, um, actually, before we move on, I want to make sure I export this so I don't forget. So export default YouTube counter. Okay. And the first thing we want to do is we're going to use the use state um, uh, React hook in order to set up some state values. So to do that, we first write const and then we pass an array and this array has two values and the first value is going to be uh, the the state value so the name of the state so in this case we're going to call it subscriber count and the next value is the name of the function that changes the state so that's going to be set subscriber count now you can name these anything you want but this is a really good naming convention. So whatever the name is, so subscriber count and then pass set in front of whatever the name is that you set here. So that's a good way of just naming your states. And in order to use state, we have to say use state and we can uh, hit tab to auto import that. And then we can pass in uh, an argument here for the initial value. But in this case, we're just going to, uh, you know, leave it blank because we don't we don't have an initial value here that we want to use. Now the next thing we want to uh, use is the use effect uh, React hooks. Now uh, Facebook or React says that you can kind of think of use effect as component life cycles like you would in a class. Now this actually, this idea kind of got me in trouble when I was thinking about uh, using this and refactoring Skull Thrive because it's kind of like there's some subtleties about use effect that are really important. Uh, and I'm not going to cover all those in this tutorial, but I'll be sure to link to a really useful uh, documentation that I think you should read in order to really understand some of those subtleties if you want to use use effect in your uh, your projects. Now, in order to use use effect, we first just write use effect, then tab to auto import that at the top. And then we pass in an arrow function and the arrow function is the function that we're going to be, uh, and beneath the arrow function is what we're going to actually run uh, when this, uh, this component renders. And the first thing we want to do is just go ahead and destructure those values that we have in our config file. So that's going to be the API key, and the other one is the channel ID. And that's going to be equal to config. Now, we haven't imported config yet, so let's come up here and import config, and that's going to be from the same uh, uh, folder in just our config.js file. So if we save that, that should be good. And now what we wanna do is we want to go ahead and I'm gonna set a constant called API call. And this is going to be the URL that we're going to call on the API. Now I'm just gonna copy this from the code that I already have out because it's a nice long value here. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to use string interpolation in order to uh, pass in the API key value in the channel ID. So I'm just going to paste that in and I'll be sure to give this long code here so you don't have to stop the video and try to copy this out. Um, but you can see here that in order to pass in a uh, value here in a string interpolation, 
And when I say string interpolation, I'm the way we write that is with backtick. So I have a backtick here and a backtick here. And then that allows us to pass in values like this with the dollar sign and then curly braces, then the value in between here. Now I need, actually need to change this to channel ID, just channel ID instead of channel ID one. And now you'll see once we set that, that these are no longer like the opacity is not dropped on them because it's saying, hey, these are actually being used. Uh, and uh, we can see those being used here in our API call. So now that we have this constant just hanging around, we're gonna be using the fetch API in order to call this, return a promise, and then get some data off of that promise. So the next thing we wanna do is write fetch, passing in the API call. And then once we get that back, we're gonna get a promise. And with that promise, we're just gonna call that the result. And with that result, we want to return another promise, but in something that we can read it off of. In that case, it's gonna be JSON. So we can just do that like so. Then off of this, we're going to just call this data, and now we can read off of this data and do something with it. So then we're just do another arrow function. And let's just go ahead and console.log that data. Now, right now we're not going to, um, you know, we're not going to actually, uh, we don't want to see anything because we're not using this component quite yet. So let's come down here and make sure we're returning something. So return, and we'll just return a div that says hello. And then let's come back into our index.js and let's go ahead and just use our YouTube counter and then save that. And now you can see our component is right here. And if we come into the console here, you can see that we get this object back. And it's a little hard to see. You know what, I can actually just go ahead and just inspect it this way as well. All right, so we get this object. And this object, you can see they have some data returning to us. And on it we have this uh, value called items. And then we have an array, and the array is going to be the channel we just called. And on this, we can see the ID that we passed in. And we also have something here in the statistics. And this is where we can get some values off of this. So we can see the subscriber count, the video count, the view count, and then we can just uh, call this data here in our component. So let's go ahead and just exit out of the, com uh, the console here. And I'm just gonna go back to 100%. And let's come back into our YouTube counter. So now that you saw that data printing through the console, we can just go ahead and delete that. And what I wanna do is I wanna set another constant and I'm gonna call this just uh, count. And this is going to be equal to data.items and we're gonna get the first thing in the array. And this is what we just looked at. And this is gonna be, um, the next thing we wanna get off of the data items is the uh, statistics, statistics. And off of that, we want to get the subscriber count. So if we save that, we now have this value that has this number in it. So now we need to update our state in order to display that. So to do that, we can use the set subscriber count up here to change our state. So we'll call set subscriber count passing in the count value. So if we save that, now, the reason I'm getting an, uh, an issue here is because this is outside the scope. So I need to make sure that this is still right underneath this count. There we go. So now that's no longer an error. And this uh, is going to update once this renders. Now we're actually not using the state value anywhere. So let's go ahead and uh, use that state value right here. So I'm gonna do a curly bracket and then call the subscriber count. And right now we're returning a div. So if we come in and inspect this and look in our console, you can see that we're returning a div. Now, um, this is fine if if it works for you, for you, but what we can use is a React fragment in order to uh, make uh, satisfy React and make sure that we're wrapping a child of our component, but we're also not adding anything extra to the DOM. So if we go ahead and just write out fragment and auto import that, you can see that we're, importing that from React. And then we can just wrap this in a React fragment. So let's go ahead and save that. 
And now you'll see if we inspect this in our console that you know we're not getting that div anymore um, from this component. It's just getting the div from the original one here in our index.js file, this one right here. All right, so now that we have that number, like we have access to it, it's still, it's not easy to read. It's missing some commas. Um, now, if you're satisfied with this, keep it as is, but we're actually going to be using uh, a dependency called numeral. And in order to add a dependency to um, a project here in Code Sandbox, you just come over here to add a dependency. We're going to search for numeral and then click uh, here to add that to our project. And now we can go ahead and come back into our YouTube counter and import that at the top. So I'm just going to come into the top and then say import numeral from numeral. So let's go ahead and just go into the documentation here. So numeral npm, and this is going to take you to the npm uh, you know site where you can actually see the package. And at the top, you can see the website and documentation link. And the thing that we're going to be using is that we're going to be using this format uh, method here in order to pass in an argument of this one that's going to then uh, add commas here to our actual value. So let's come back into our project and let's actually use numeral here on this data that we're getting back. And to start, we just write out numeral and then we want to pass in this value. So I'm just gonna copy this and then paste it in numeral. And then we want to format that. So we'll do format. Then we're gonna go ahead and pass in that argument that we want right here. Because this is the style that we want. That's why we're copying this format value. So once we uh, paste uh, in that value here and save it, whoops, I need to make sure I added a there we go, another quote. You can see that these are, this is now structured the way that we want. Hey, this is Hunter from the future. I apologize for the interruption, but I realized when I was editing the video that I forgot to mention the second argument that use effect can be passed, which is an array. And in this array, you pass in variables, and anytime these variables update, it will cause use effect to run again. Now, in our case, we just want use effect to run when the component mounts. So the way we can uh, achieve that is go ahead and pass in that array and just not pass any variables in. And this is going to ensure that use effect runs when the component uh, is mounted and we're not going to have any issues here. So again, sorry for the interruption. Let's get back to watching the video. And let's come back into um, the index here and just surround this with like a H1 tag so we can make this a little bigger so it's easier to see. And there you go. Now you have easily created a dynamic component that pulls in data from the YouTube API and then you can display that data on your website easily using React. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing and be sure to check out our other design and development courses on our YouTube channel and on skillthrive.com. Again, I'm Hunter from Skillthrive and I'll see you in the next video.